Last time I did a Final Cut Pro tips and tricks video, you guys really seemed to enjoy it. I even got a bunch of comments asking for more. So I had to do another tips and tricks video, but this time I wanted to make it even more helpful. So for this video, I reached out to some of my favorite YouTubers that use Final Cut Pro to edit their videos and asked them to each share one tip or trick that's been a game changer for them. These guys did not disappoint. Let's jump right into it. A tip that has been absolutely game changing for me in Final Cut Pro is the use of audio extension with hold frames. I have this music track that I want to almost pause or to slope off as this guy goes into a backflip. But if I push play right now, you'll notice the music doesn't line up very well with the flip. So to fix that, find the point in time on your track where you want the music to stop. Go ahead and push shift H. You'll see here by my waveforms that the music has completely stopped. And if I were to push play, it would sound like it just has a solid cut. Once we've done that, we can go on over into our effects browser and locate the cathedral effect. Go ahead and apply that onto your music track. And already you can see how the audio waveforms have been extended. However, we don't want this effect to be applied to our entire music track. So we'll need to go to the inspector in the top right hand corner and locate the cathedral effect. Go back just a few frames before you want the music to stop and set the amount down to zero. Then click here to add a keyframe. Move forward a few frames, then drag it up to something like 40. Now, if we push play, we should have a nice trailing off of our music. Finally, we don't want the music to continue to have that effect applied to it, so we'll just click to add one more keyframe right at the end here and go up to the point where we want the music to kick back in and set the amount down to zero. So that is a game changing tip that vastly improves the way I work with audio in Final Cut Pro. I'm Chris from pal to tech and I'm going to show you two ways that you can quickly switch workplaces in Final Cut Pro. Let's start with the free option. The first thing you want to do is arrange your workspace to be exactly as you want it. Because I just love huge vector scopes, I'm going to put one front and center in my new custom workspace. So now I'll go to window, workspaces, and I'm going to save workspace as. Next, go to the preferences in your Mac into the keyboard section under keyboard shortcuts. Click on app shortcuts, click on the little plus, and for application, choose Final Cut Pro app. Where it says menu title, copy exactly what it says here. Window, workspaces, huge vector scope, or whatever the name you assign your custom workspace. Now between each of the three sections, you need to type a dash and then a bracket just like this. And notice that I'm including the space as well right here because I have two words. Then go ahead and type the shortcut keys on your keyboard that you want to assign. I'll choose option command nine. So now when I need that custom workspace and that really big vector scope, I do option command nine, boom, there it is. But there's a few drawbacks for this way of doing it. You don't get enough options for keyboard shortcuts because so many of those are reserved already by the command editor. I love keyboard shortcuts, but sometimes being able to quickly press buttons is a much better way to go. Let me show you the next option. Go ahead and download the Elgato Stream Deck mobile app. It's completely free. However, you do have the option to purchase a hardware version with physical buttons on it. And this will be what I'll use to show you the tip with, but keep in mind you can do the same thing on the free iPhone or iPad version of this. Next, you're gonna need to install a macro editor and automator on your computer. I cannot recommend it enough, and I think it's a great app for your Mac. Once you've installed and have Keyboard Maestro running, simply click Add Macro right here, and you could rename it whatever you want. And since we already have Final Cut open and running in the background, it is going to assume that it's triggered when Final Cut Pro is at front. So click on New Trigger and choose Hotkey Trigger. Choose any keyboard combination that we want to use. I'm going to do Option Zero. Go ahead and click on New Action. You want to find the one that says Select or Show a Menu Item. Double click on it to add it to the window here. So now you're going to tell it exactly where in the Final Cut Pro menu it needs to find that custom workspace. So first it's going to go to Window 
window. Then it's gonna choose workspaces. And if you need more, which we do here, click on the little green to add another one and type in the name of your custom workspace. And that's it, you're all done. So next, go into the Stream Deck options right here. And in the Stream Deck section, you wanna drag hotkey over to one of the buttons, just like this. And you can assign it a custom icon if you want. Title it something short, that way it fits on the button itself, you see that? Where it says click to assign, click on that right there. Option zero. Remember, that's the keyboard combination we chose earlier when we added it to Keyboard Maestro. Once you close that out, you're done. So now when you're in Final Cut Pro and you wanna switch to that custom workspace, just hit the button, boom just like that. You can assign anything you want to them. So for the top row right here, I have various workspaces, right? I've got my default. I've got my one if I'm doing multi-cam editing. I've got one if I'm browsing footage, one for checking my exposure, one for checking my color, and so forth. I even have a really handy one right here called Audio Fade, and then I press the button, have a look at that. You see what it did? So there you have it. A very fast way to switch to any Final Cut Pro workspace that you want. And now on to the next tip. Hey guys, I am Dylan John, and this little hack should hopefully help prevent you from pulling out your hair so much while editing. How many of you get annoyed at how sometimes when you try and drag a transition between your clip, you'll get this out of media warning. You may already know that the reason is because there's no more media left on the end of one of those clips or both. That's what this red edge represents. And the transition needs extra media for it to work. Now you could trim the clip, so then the transition will have media to work with, but oftentimes you may want that part of the clip that you just trimmed to be visible in the project. So try out this little hack instead. Select the clip and press the shortcut, Option, Command, and Up Arrow to lift that clip from the primary storyline. Head to the end of the clip and go a frame over and hit the shortcut Shift H to make a hold frame. This basically pauses your clip on that frame for however long you want. Then you just go to the end of that gap clip and trim your clip by pressing Option and right bracket or just trimming manually. Then blast that clip back down into the primary storyline by pressing Option, Command, and Down Arrow this time. Now, when you drag the transition between the clips, you won't get that warning since the transition is using the media in the hold frame. The nice thing is, with the vast majority of transitions, you won't be able to tell that the clip was paused before. I know I showed an example affecting the end of a clip, but you can also do the same exact thing for the start of a clip as well. After hitting Shift H, you'll just need to drag the unpaused part of the clip back into the correct position, and then trim off the beginning bit that you paused. And bada bing bada boom, no more hair pulling. Hey guys, Steve here from Ripple Training. Serge asked me to show you a feature or tool that I consider a game changer in Final Cut Pro. Well, for me, that tool is a position tool, and it does way more than you think. Often when working, you need a fast way to create timing gaps for the purpose of adding placeholders for future content, or you need to open up some breathing room in your dialogue. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to create some timing space on this first clip to make room for another clip, or perhaps an opening title. First, I'll show you the long way. I'll move the playhead to the middle of the clip, Press Command B to split the clip, select the left side of the cut, then press Shift Delete to create a gap. Now that was four steps. I'll undo that. A faster method would be to call up the position tool by pressing the P key, selecting the left edge of the clip, then dragging to the right. A gap clip is created dynamically as you trim. Let's look at another example. Let's say that I wanted to add a five second timing gap between these shots. Drag a marquee around the clips, then drag to the right watching the tooltip. Release the mouse when it reports the duration you want. Later, I'll replace this gap clip with a five second animated title. But where the position tool really comes in handy is editing voiceover. Here's a clip I've recorded with Final Cut Pro's built-in voiceover tool, but I need to line up the timing with the shots. I'll play back the voiceover to give you some context. Santa Catalina offers a scuba diver a wide variety of marine life from dense kelp forests to moray eels and even the occasional mermaid. The key to what I'm about to show you is to place your voiceover into a connected storyline. Select the clip and press Command G. Enable the clip skimmer by pressing Option Command S. I'll skim to just before I say, from dense kelp forests. Then press Command B to split the clip. 
press P, then drag to the right of the split to line it up with the picture. I'll repeat this process for the moray eel section. And one more time for the mermaid section. Let's play that back in marine life. From dense kelp forests, to moray eels, and even the occasional mermaid. If I need to adjust the timing of each section, I'll press A to switch back to the selection tool, then trim the gap clips to finesse the timing. As an added bonus to this workflow, if you select the connected storyline and press Command-Shift-G to ungroup the voiceover clips, you now have independent connection points for each related section of voiceover. Because of Final Cut Pro's magnetic timeline, if you want to move the shots around, the related voiceovers stay with the clip. The magnetic timeline is the reason I prefer Final Cut over other NLEs. By the way, I'm curious what your favorite Final Cut feature is. The next powerful position tool feature I call Dynamic Overwrite Editing. Let's say that I wanted to move this kelp POV shot over this scuba selfie shot, but not affect the project timing. With the position tool active, I'll drag to the left and position it over the shot. Notice that I can drag it right or left over the clip. The frames below the clip will be overwritten when I release the mouse. I'll play that back. The position tool maintains the project timing by leaving a gap where the clip previously lived. So what to do about this gap? Well, I could delete it, but that would affect the timing. Or I could replace the gap with another shot. But what if I don't want to do either? Here's my answer. Park the playhead in the middle of the gap clip, then use the position tool to trim the edges so that they align with the playhead. The gap clip has been overwritten using available media from the adjacent clips. As you can see, the position tool is more than just a gap clip creation tool. It's really a trimming tool that preserves the timing of your projects. With the position tool active, you can also do dynamic overwrites from the browser. I'll drag out a range on this clip, then drag it over this interview clip. As before, I can place it where I want, but when I release the mouse, I lose the dialogue. I'll undo that. If you have to do this type of edit, you'll need to expand the audio first. Then drag the source clip into your target clip. But honestly, in this situation, it's just simply faster and easier to do a connect edit. There's another small thing to be aware of. You can only perform overwrite edits with this tool, not insert edits. Here's what I mean. I'll call up the position tool and drag out this sheep's head clip to create a gap clip. Then drag it over the edit point of the scuba selfie clip. The clip cannot be inserted into the timeline, so in this case, the clip will be overwritten. If you need to create a timing gap and insert the clip, you'll need to do this another way. I'll undo that. Select the clip and press Option-Command-Up arrow to lift it from the storyline and create a gap clip. By pressing A to retrieve the Select tool, you can then insert it into the timeline wherever you want, because you're now using the Select tool, not the Position tool. And because you're inserting the clip, the project timing is, of course, altered. The important thing is that you still have a gap clip in the timeline to do what you need to do editorially. Thanks for having me on the channel, Surge. My name is Brad, and I'm going to show you guys how to fix the two most common sync issues in multicam clips. Let's say you have a separate audio track in your multicam, and you've synced it up, but you notice that the sync is slightly off when compared to the audio on your video track. No problem. You think to yourself, you'll just use the comma and period keys to nudge the audio left or right one frame at a time to sync it up but the audio is less than one frame out of sync, meaning you need to move the audio in subframes in order to get the perfect sync. The trick is to hold down Alt or Option when you use the period or comma keys to nudge the clip. Now you can move the clip in much smaller increments to perfectly sync that audio. It's important to note that you can only move audio in subframes, not video clips. If you have audio on multiple video clips that needs to be synced, but one is slightly out, you can select the video clip Hit Shift F to reveal the clip in the browser, add a new track over here in the drop down menu and select the audio only option from this drop down menu and then drag only the audio onto its own track so that you can adjust the sync in subframes. And here's the second common problem you might face. What if your clips are in sync at the beginning of the multicam clip, but over time the clips drift more and more out of sync to the point that it's way out of sync near the end. 
This could happen if you have two video clips that are shot at different frame rates, or if your audio was recorded at 44.1 kHz and the audio on your video is at 48 kHz. To fix the drift, you need to create two markers at the beginning where the sync is perfect, like at this peak in the waveform over here. Then at the end, you can find a word or a peak in the waveform that should sync and create a marker at that point on both clips. Now you can either slow down or speed up one of the clips, just select it, hit Command R to open up the Retime Editor and drag this handle over here until the markers line up. You might need to bounce back and forth between the markers to make sure that they line up at the beginning and at the end of the clip. And that's how you can perfectly sync the audio in your multicam clips. Thanks for having me on to share my tip, Serge. Let's get right into this. I'm working on a video in Final Cut Pro and I just filmed some A-roll for a new tutorial video. And I have a section here that I need to remove, but I need to remove it quickly because there's a lot of these sections to remove at once. So let's just play this through so you know what we're dealing with. I'm using voiceover as much as possible. So how do you do it? How do we... So I've got a stumble here. So I need to cut this section out from here to here. Now, normally what you might do is blade this clip on either side of the area you want to remove and then select it and hit the delete key. Seems fast enough, right? But I think there are two ways that are even faster. So what we're going to do first is we're going to still blade the clip here, but instead of blading down here, we're going to move our skimmer to where we want the cut point to be. And we're going to hit option left close bracket, which is the trim start keyboard shortcut in Final Cut Pro. And you can see that section that we wanted to cut out just disappears in Instantly. I think this is a really fast way to quickly cut down a roll or interviews much faster than doing the double blade and delete technique So let's look at one other way to do it We can use the range tool by selecting R on our keyboard and then highlighting the area that we want to cut out and then just simply hit delete and that section's removed. I personally like using Trim N because I have the Trim N shortcut program to my Stream Deck mobile on my iPad here in my edit bay. So all I have to do is blade on the left side of the clip, move my skimmer, and then hit one button on my Stream Deck mobile. And I am cutting down my A-roll as fast as possible. So I hope this helps you speed up your editing workflow in Final Cut Pro. Serge, thanks again for having me on the channel. Everyone out there, don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli. I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. The next one is a simple one, but it's actually really handy in a lot of situations because if you press the delete key, there's a ripple delete. It'll delete that clip and move the whole timeline and bring it together. But if you press the forward delete, it creates a gap clip. There's two ways to delete a piece of footage. Using the forward delete, it doesn't change the timing of the overall piece and it visually gives you a clue where you need to fill in a shot later. So instead of having the whole timeline collapse on itself and lose the spot where you need to fill in, this is a good way to visually remind yourself you need to fill in footage at that point. What's up everybody, BT here. Thank you Serge for having me on. Honestly, I was kind of surprised that you asked me to help you out with this video because I'm not an editor. I am not an expert, I'm honestly, kind of a hack, uh, let's be honest. And thank God for Final Cut Pro and plugins because you can be a hack like me and with some really good plugins, it can make you look way better than you are. Like if I wanted, if I wanted to do a silky smooth zoom in and zoom out, I can do that. If I wanted to animate something up onto the screen and bring your attention to it in a cool way. I can also do that all thanks to plugins. Well, that's it, Serge. That's all I got for you. Like I said, I don't, I don't know keyboard shortcuts or anything else, just plugins. I'll catch you later. Hello, Serge, and thank you for your invite. It's an honor for me to be among some of the best video editors in Final Cut Pro. My go-to feature for Final Cut Pro, something that really changed the workflow on my video editing, is the range tool. You know, when we press VR and we select the range tool and we can go into a specific section of our video, we can select it and then we can, for example, slow down. We can select how we can do speed drums with the range tool instead of blading or cutting and change the speed. And one more feature that the range tool changed me, you know, the workflow again, <laughs> is you can select the portion of audios on your video or on your music that you can make it down to have the voice 
higher or you can make it up and lower the background or the music, the audio from your actual video. Thank you again for inviting me. Yahara. You have to admit, there's some really useful stuff here. I'll link everyone's channel in the description below. If you use Final Cut Pro to edit your videos, go subscribe to every one of them. You won't regret it. And a huge thank you to everyone that contributed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.